Hey gang, AV here. Welcome to my review of the G.I. Joe Retro Collection AWE Striker, otherwise known as the Awe Striker. Um, here it is in the box. As you can see, it is retro style packaging, very reminiscent to the way it was when we were kids back in the 80s, and awesome. Uh, it even has the uh, classic uh, Hasbro logo down there in the bottom corner. Um, it is missing the Greatest American Hero or real American hero um, byline underneath G.I. Joe. But that's because this packaging is meant to be uh, distributed in several different countries, which I'll touch on again in a second. Um, so that's the front of the box. You can see crankcase right there through the window. Here's the top of the box. The side. The other side. There's the bottom with a whole bunch of legal stuff. And here is the back, where you have a product shot, the figure, um, a couple highlights, mostly the uh, the hose attachment to the cannon and the removable engine cover. We're going to have a closer look at both of those in a second, as well as the file card for the figure, which we will have a closer look at right now. Let's get the box out of the way. I already have a copy of this already opened up, and I removed the file card from, uh, file card from that. So here it is. As you can see, it is distributed with five different languages on it. I've spoken about this in other retro reviews. I'm not a huge fan of that. Quite frankly, I think that um, they should um, distribute the, the boxes with specific languages to the different regions that they plan on selling the item in. Having multiple languages on the box is just lazy on their part and it kind of takes away from the from the collectible aspect of trying to hunt down things from different countries not to mention it also takes away from their ability to adequately describe the character on his own file card um, basically i'll read it to you normally i pause it and ask you to read it yourself but um crankcase roll awe striker driver Primary specialty, motor vehicle driver. Secondary specialty, armor. Birthplace, Lawrence, Kansas. Crankcase is a former race car driver who is at his best when the speedometer is redlined. And that's it. That's the only information they give you about Crankcase. Um, quite frankly, this, this file card's kind of a waste of paper because it really doesn't tell you very much about the guy. It's just one sentence blurp about him. Really, really unfortunate, in my opinion, that they did that. But uh, anyway, here is the toy itself. And before we have a closer look at it, I'm going to have a look at some of the other paperwork the, uh, uh, the toy came with. Namely, uh, just like a lot of the other retro figures and some of the uh, vintage... Star Wars figures I've reviewed. It comes with this piece of paper, again, um, with several different languages on it. This basically says warning in like 27 di different languages, made in China in like 27 different languages. Um, this is a product of Hasbro from Pawtucket, Rhode Island in several languages. And then uh, customer service numbers and so on and so forth. Again, kind of lazy that they blanket half the world on a piece of paper instead of just making the packaging unique for different regions. Um, anyway, here is the instruction book, booklet or blueprints, if you will. Um, this is nothing compared to the classic group blueprint, uh, blueprints that we used to get, um, but it, it is kind of styled after it i guess you could say but i mean it, it's missing a lot of the detail and the special um blueprint aspects of the originals but anyhow um it just basically uh assembly instructions for the all striker out of the box and the label placement for the sticker sheet and then you have the sticker sheet itself i've already applied the stickers so not much to talk about with that and here we go so, as you can see, crankcase fits in the driver's seat just fine. Crankcase 
uh, crankcase comes with two accessories, I guess you could say. One is his figure stand, which says G.I. Joe, has two foot pegs. It says crankcase there on the front. And 2007 Hasbro copyright there on the bottom. Crankcase himself. Who's holding on with a death grip on his, uh, <laughs> on his steering wheel there. There we go. Comes with one accessory, and that's his helmet. Which actually has some paint apps on it with the strap, as you can see. Or it's actually the helmet itself is painted. The strap is uh, the mold color, it looks like. Pretty cool. I'm glad they gave us that. And I like the strap aspect on it. I think it looks nice. His vest is, of course, removable, but I I have I don't like to do it on my figures, quite frankly, because sometimes it's tough to get them back on the way they were. So take my word for it, though. It does unpeg here in the front, so you can actually remove the vest if you like. Um, not, the pistol here is permanent, though. It's molded on. Nothing else comes off of the vest itself, and he has no holsters or anything on him. Um, we'll have a look at his uh, detail. Pretty cool looking figure. I unfortunately don't have the original crankcase handy, so I can't show him off to show how accurate he is to the retro version. Uh, let's go over his articulation now. His head is on a ball joint. We'll do a full 360. Doesn't really want to look up very much and doesn't look down very much either. He doesn't have much of a tilt side to side either. So um, his arms will do a full 360 at the shoulder. There's, they can go up about that high. There's nothing at the bicep. His elbows will bend almost 90 degrees as well as flatten out and they rotate all the way around. His wrists rotate 360 degrees there at the top of the glove. There is no bend wrist hinge there. Um, he has an ab crunch, which is a little stiff on mine, but as you can see, you, you can move him around a decent amount. He does rotate up there as well. And the, uh, the harness doesn't really bother his motion at all with that either. His legs, you can kick his leg up about that high. Kick his leg back, kind of. He can do the splits about that far. He's got double jointed knees, so he can kick his heel back about that far. Full rotation here at the ankle. Point his toes down and point his toes up. Decent articulation and sculpt on crankcase, not too bad. I do like this figure. And he makes a decent vehicle driver. Definitely far from the worst that we've gotten with the uh, G.I. Joe in recent years. Retaliation figures only had five points of articulation. And he has obviously got a lot more than that. So let's have a look at the uh, All Striker itself, shall we? Um, some of the features on this thing. It has a mounted cannon on the top that pivots up and down as well as rotates 360. You just have to watch the antennas when you do it. It, of course, rolls with three, three free rolling wheels. All three have suspension, as you can see. And unlike uh, the FOE Striker, which I just got through reviewing, um, this does not rub. The retro version does not rub. Um, the suspension is actually quite nice on this. Um, has this... Uh, uh, I, th I forget what that is. Is that a camera that helps? I, th I believe that's a camera that actually helps uh, aim the top cannon, if I believe. But it still has the traditional hose that connects it up to the uh, mounting bracket up there. In the back, it has a uh, removable engine cover. Same as the original, if you'll remember. Just have to get your fingernail up in there. There you go. Which has the same engine that you can find on the, uh, I believe it was the mobile command center. And of course you can take the engine out, which is a cool feature. 
just pegs right back in. Put that back on top of there. It's a cool looking vehicle. And I gotta say, it was an awful lot of fun opening this thing up and putting all the stickers on. Um, as far as how close it is to the original, I actually have an original right here, so we can have a look side by side, side by side comparison. As you can see, the, the greens are a little bit different. Um, the modern version seems to be a, a bit darker, whereas this is more of an olive green. The overall mold looks to be very similar. Some of the stickers and sticker placements are a little bit different. Um, I just put this on here recently. Um, myself, just the other day. And I followed the sticker sheet pretty closely, as close as I could manage. So I'm fairly, fairly confident I got everything where it belonged. However, it, this is me we're talking about, so I'm sure I made a mistake here or there. I'm sure somebody will point it out. But anyhow, um, for what it's worth, they look very similar. This one actually also has messed up suspension, which I've noticed. So this one does rub too. Um, the modern one does not. The suspension still works pretty good on that. Pretty cool, and it's pretty close to the original, you'll have to admit. Um, there may be subtle differences with the mold. I know in my in the comments section for my His Tank review, um, some people pointed out some things that I had missed. If I miss anything in here, feel free to do that again. Um, I I want to uh, I want the community to take part in the comments section, make sure that we have good information on my channel, whether it comes from me or from you guys in the comments section. So if I forget to mention something, by all means, put it down there in the comments so that you educate me as well as everybody else watching. <coughs> um, but excuse me. Um, it may have a couple subtle differences in the, in the mold, but nothing that's really jumping out at me. Um, it still has the, uh, the fuel, um, gas tank there in the back for the, uh, for the hose to go in. Um, they both have the removable engine covers. The cannon looks very similar on both models. Maybe not be exact on the nozzle, but it, it looks very similar. Um, the front, actually, I just noticed this, that there is like a rib line on the front of the original. As you can see, the hood is different. So that is one difference. All in all, very, very cool. I'm very happy to have the retro version. I mean, it's 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 awesome. Um, it is one of those uh, one of those vehicles that just screams GI Joe, in my opinion. It, it's one of the staples for the line, and I was happy to see it in the retro line. Um, it is out in tar in I'm sorry Walmart right now, um, so be on the lookout. Uh, I do highly recommend that you pick one up. They retail for around $25, give or take. And uh, I highly recommend it. I think it's a great buy. So anyway, if you like this video, check out my channel. If you like what you see there, then please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.